Congressman Stupak, uh, you may be killing um, you, you turn a coat, son of a I hope you bleed out your ass, got cancer, and die, you You, you do not, you do not um, say that you're a pro-life and then for a, a few bucks, um, you know, do turn coat and hurt the country, you I hope you die. It kind of puts a new twist on pro-life, doesn't it? Well, those are just some of the calls that have been coming into Bart Stupak's office since he finally agreed to go along with health care reform. But Stupak, who held out, of course, for stricter constrictions on abortion rights, um, is just one of the House legislators who's been receiving violent threats and there have been windows burst or broken all across this country. In New York, Louise Slaughter has had threats to her phone, sniper attacks threatened of the ch to the children of legislators who supported reform. What's going on? Who's responsible? We're joined by Dave Newitt. He's managing editor at Crooks and Liars and the author of The Eliminationists, How Hate Talk Radicalized the American Right. David. What's happening? And, well, that's the obvious question, isn't it? Who's responsible? Well, I, I think, you know, it's hard to pin any kind of responsibility on exactly one person uh, for this kind of rhetoric. It's been spreading for a long time. And I think that it's more of a phenomenon that's responsible rather than any individuals, of course. Um, the biggest phenomenon is that we've had this spread of extremist thought, extremist rhetoric, and extremist behavior. Uh, trickling over into mainstream conservatism for the last 15, 20 years. You know, it began in the 90s, and uh, it began accelerating during the Bush era. And now that uh, President Obama is, is in charge, it's uh, going completely wild. Mm. Now, I was on a talk show, talk show last night with um, Ed Schultz, and, um, a representative from Oklahoma, who said... This is even-handed stuff. It happens on all sides. You see it everywhere. I mean, Ed and I tried our best to point out the facts, but how would you have responded? Well, that's just a joke. That's laughable. Yeah, there is some nastiness on the left, but it doesn't entail what, what I call eliminationist rhetoric, which is essentially rhetoric that, so, that dehumanizes other people, uh, makes them fit, uh, makes them basically into objects fit only for elimination. A uh, classic example of this is what Glenn Beck's been doing in the last few weeks uh, in attacking the progressive movement. He's calling them a cancer, uh, calls them a disease, a virus, compares them to vampires, uh, rats, snakes, and cockroaches, he's calling them. These are all, this is classic eliminationist rhetoric because eliminationism was a, was a, a major component of the anti-Semitism that ran rampant in, in Nazi Germany. But let's talk about what you mentioned earlier, which was the relationship with mainstream conservatism. You've got Minority House Leader um, Boehner saying of one of his neighbors who voted for the bill on health care, he could be a dead man. He may be a dead man, I think was the quote. Um, what is that connection between mainstream folks in Congress? I mean, this is not the same as, you know, the Unabomber or something. Well, the, the, when it goes mainstream, and particularly when it gets to the upper levels, when you have guys like in positions of responsibility, like people like Boehner or or Newt Gingrich, who these guys always use this, or frequently are using this kind of rhetoric now, um, or Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh doing it, it's a totally different uh, thing. It, what it does is it amplifies it by an exponential factor. Uh, you know, we're used to seeing this kind of rhetoric. Rhetoric's been around for years. It's part of the American fabric, but it typically it tends to exist on sort of a violent fringe of the American right. Is the difference, David, who is being targeted? I mean, we've certainly seen, well, we've seen the assassination of doctors. We've seen attacks on immigrants. We're going to talk more about that in just a minute. We've certainly seen attacks on racial minorities. Is it because a different group are being targeted that we're paying this much attention this time? And, and will it provoke a different response? Well, yeah, I don't know why we're paying attention now, uh, except that it is stepping up to really a, an insane level, and maybe that's why we're paying attention. I, that's what I suspect. But um, 
Yeah, actually, the target doesn't seem to matter a lot because their targets vary. They can be immigrants, they can be liberals, they can be, you know, congressmen. It could be anybody that sort of falls within their uh, is target group. Um, what, well, so maybe it's a good thing that it's Congress people finally feeling what it feels like to be out there on the receiving end of some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely endemic to... What it is endemic to is, is the people on the right who have been using this, particularly right-wing authoritarians. This is, uh, this is actually sort of a symptomatic of, of right-wing authoritarianism. So you think it goes with the same kind of mindset that says just vote no, 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 no matter what it is? Yes, I do. Um, as a matter of fact, we found, we found that there's this big crossover between people who voted against health care and people who voted against Obama because he's black. Uh, it's not necessarily the case that they will, that you'll find that they, that they say are racist in terms of their attitudes towards health care. But it's the same set of people. And what it is is a sort of same, uh, a shared set of attitudes and beliefs that uh, that becomes really problematic. Very quickly, somebody on our show the other day said that it was the Vice President, Joe Biden, really, who's best place to go out there and say, actually, somebody needs to be talking about race and racism and discrimination in this country on this issue. Do you think there's something people can do? Um, obviously, the leadership, there's a responsibility there. But what about the rest of us? What can we do? Well, I, I, and honestly, I don't think it's so much an issue of race as I think it's a, an issue of hateful hatefulness, um, and this is it, which spreads beyond race. I mean, these people are talking about eliminating progressives. <laughs> I mean, when you talk when you watch Glenn Beck's show, and he and he attacks progressives as a, a cancer, and he does it for sixty entire minutes. Um, you, that that's a problem. I would say so. David, thanks so much. We're from Crooks and Liars. There are links to Crooks and Liars and David's work at our website, grittv.org.